We have an exciting interview today. Uh, we talked a little bit about this guest before, and then we're lucky enough to have Amanda Kunha join us here on the Basic Bogies podcast. So Amanda, just give us a quick intro about yourself and where you're from. Yeah, hi, I'm Amanda Kuna. I've been golfing since I was around like five years old. I uh, played junior golf throughout my whole life. And then I'm from Hawaii, Oahu. And yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. It's honestly my pleasure. Like it's, yeah, thank you. Of course, yeah. I mean, it was it was um, pretty funny how this all came about because our, our buddy Ricky Riley uh, was out there on the adaptive tour. And he got approached, and they were like, hey, don't you have that podcast? And he was like, what are you talking about? And I think it was, was it your yeah. family that walked out to it? That's awesome. Yeah, it was, yeah. My dad, my dad keeps up on a lot of, like, adaptive golf, like, media and news and stuff. So when he saw, like, because there's a couple podcasts out there, and yeah. he saw that we were playing with one of them. And so I was like, oh, that is so cool. Small world. Just gets smaller and smaller. Yeah. Um. So you said that you started when you were around like five. What was what got you into it? Was, was it like your did your family get you into it or was it something that you just gravitated towards at a young age? No, it was more my dad. Um, I'm sure his dad went out golfing with him, uh, which led him to like the game of golf. And then it was kind of just like father daughter bonding time. We went out on the weekends um, to local range and just like hitting balls. I would hit like two balls sometimes if I wanted to but it was cool just being outside and I was a really active kid as I was a really active kid so I really enjoyed um just you know going to a new area and exploring cool yeah when did you like kind of start to play in some competitions you said you played some junior golf so how old were you once you started doing some of that yeah I was around well at seven years old I got accepted into a junior golf program um it's the same one michelle we had gotten into oh, cool. or attended so that was really awesome um i played with them i joined their tour so we kind of played a tournament a month i believe once i got up the ranks mm -hmm. and basically that was around like 10 years old that i started playing so it really got me wow. interested in like tournament play and being really competitive at a young yeah. age and then i played intermediate golf uh in my middle school and then high school i played cool yeah and then so like when yeah. did you kind of knew obviously like early on like you were was your goal kind of to try to play in college then mm -hmm. yeah i actually it was really weird the the year before because i lost my vision um between my the summer of between my junior and senior year so okay. junior year i was full set on going to McAllister mm -hmm. up in minnesota and yeah. i even was talking with them um i was about to travel up there over the summer as well but that didn't end up happening so mm -hmm. it's kind of funny that i didn't end up going where i thought i was gonna go for like the whole year yeah what uh what is like your just your gen your general like practice routine then like how often do you practice and and obviously like you have somebody with you that's kind of like assisting you as you're practicing for feedback on shots mm -hmm. when i'm home in hawaii i practice maybe i try to go every other day i do mm -hmm. um range session chipping and then putting for about like a couple hours and then if my dad comes home from work early uh we'll go and play nine holes throughout the week but then on the weekends we play 18. um mm -hmm. it's kind of like a family thing that we do um but for the range my dad was the person who would always go with me but actually i recently got the garmin approach r10 oh, and nice. it was really oh, cool because <laughs> <laughs> I can use my iPad because my iPad's huge. I have like the 12.9. So it's like mm. the iPad Pro. And it, I'm able to see my shots. So it's really given me a lot of independence in practicing. Yeah, it's awesome. Which I'm using here in Arizona, which is really convenient because then I'm not like having to rely on other people right, when yeah. I'm on the range. How's your dad's game? You, you kick his butt? yeah i think so i think yeah. he would say that as well yeah, yeah. although he's That's not awesome. terrible he's not bad he's like yeah. a mid 80s shooter so it's not bad at all yeah yeah no that's pretty funny 
But, yeah. um, okay, so you mentioned it. So you are at the U of A then, right? So you're at the University of Arizona. Yep. Um, yeah, when did Wildcats. like, yeah, go Wildcats. Yeah. Um, when did, uh, <laughs> playing college golf become like the major focus for you? So when was like, when were you decided, like, I really want to take my game to like the collegiate level? Yeah. So during my senior year, the senior year was really hard because this is me first trying to learn how to live life academic, like with being blind and academics and all of that. Um, but then my season started, was gonna start for golf, for varsity. And I was the only woman on the team. So there wasn't an issue of like, if I was gonna make the team again. Um, and my dad was the co-head coach. So, you know, I had a really small high school. Um, mm. But then I started practicing again, probably around like fall time, right before my season started and then during the winter break, we were in conversations with the athletic director and the ILH with our um, schools and everything like that. And I started realizing, like, I can still, like, there's no reason that I can't play. You know, there's no yeah. reason to stop playing golf. And I was really nervous about how people would react to me playing because I've been playing with most of these competitors for years all of my mm -hmm. friends all the people like you know that have been on the island competing they've all known me so it wasn't like it was scary but also not scary because I felt comfortable with everyone mm -hmm. um but once I started playing a few tournaments and I was not shooting horribly I was shooting like high seven high no not high 70s high 80s um I started realizing, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I can still play. And I wasn't last, which is really nice. My two goals for high school golf was to not come in last and to play in at least every tournament, which I did both. Um, nice. And then I was looking for schools that would help me academically because overall that is the most important part for college, for me at least. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at the University of Arizona and a couple others that had good um, disability programs. And then I came across the um, DRC, the Disability Resource Center here at U of A, and then attached to the same, on the same website, it had athletics. So my dad was really intrigued when we were looking at the site. And then we realized that they had wheelchair basketball, wheelchair tennis, swimming, and all these other great wow. sports. And we're like, there's golf here too. Like there was no one on the team and I didn't know who to reach out to. We had to do research on everything. Um, but realizing that golfing in college as a disabled person was a possibility was like huge. Like I didn't think I was going to be able to, and I dropped all of my hopes playing for college golf after losing my vision, but it was nice to know that I could still do it. I didn't even know they did that at the collegiate level, like yeah. the adaptive sports. I didn't even know that was, uh, yeah. that's, that's pretty, that's pretty sweet actually. Yeah, no. And I guess for other sports, um, adaptive sports are kind of more popular, especially for wheelchair basketball. Wheelchair basketball is one of the biggest adaptive sports, um, as, as well as wheelchair rugby. But those are the two that kind of like bring in the most players for the mm. collegiate mm. teams yeah the more you know what are you studying there at arizona then i'm majoring in communication i had a weird career change um freshman year i was originally physiology didn't want to do that i was like <laughs> being a blind athlete along with trying to memorize like and do 40 hours of homework a week is not my goal <laughs> <laughs> so I changed over to communication and I realized it was a better option. And then I'm minoring in Chinese. I'm doing four semesters of that. And then I'm thinking about minoring in public relation as well. So it's kind of like an overarching, it all mixes together. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.